Well, hello everybody and welcome to tonight's episode of, what, what might we call it? Music, coffee and waffle, perhaps. Something like that. It might um, change in the future to have fewer words. But the important thing is that you have your coffee to hand, you're sitting comfortably and you're looking forward to music. So I'll go and play a bit of coffee and a bit of waffle. So what are we going to waffle about today? Well, we've got some topics uh, that I've thought about and actually the waffle, <laughs> the waffle is often inspired by what you guys want to talk about as well. So if you can get involved in the live chat, I've got the live chat open here so I can see everything you're saying and responding to. Um, give me some things that you want me to talk about. Ask your questions and I will do my best to answer it. How about today we talk about the upcoming BBC proms. So when the organ appears in the BBC proms, it's actually featured quite a lot this year, which is amazing. I'd like to talk about a, a news article that I saw this morning uh, in one of our uh, English newspapers about redundant organs and organs under threat from being lost, basically. Uh, the new organ, our new organ, uh, a new video series on the channel uh, to, to start being broadcast every Friday. We want to talk about that. And the festivals as well. The, the recent festival that we had here on the channel and the future festivals, what we might do with them. Interspersed, of course, with four pieces of organ music. Um, and I will announce those as we go along. One of them, though, is going to be a piece by Mendelssohn. I'm going to allow you guys to choose it. I've got the uh, Mendelssohn organ sonatas around there somewhere, and I'd like you to choose one of the slow movements uh, from any of the organ sonatas, um, and I will play that one uh, based on popular demand. Caroline might have a look at the chat whilst I'm playing, and we'll see which um, organ sonata Ardagio we might play. Anyway, enough waffle for this section of the video. How about we start uh, with a bit of Bach? How about the prelude uh, in G B W V 541? It'll just be the prelude today and not the fugue. I'm going to make my trip over to the organ. Before I do that, I might have a quick sip of my coffee. Thank you. 
you know, one of the things about um, my setup here is the speakers, all of them, they're all the same brand. They're all Adam speakers and they're all really good actually. And they're also quite economical. So after about, I think five, probably even 10 minutes, they all, they all go on to standby um, and they will come back on when they receive an audio signal. And you wouldn't have known this because you're receiving a direct feed from Hauptwerk, but in here, when I just started the park then, I started and there was no sound. And I thought, oh crikey, I hope those speakers suddenly come on. So for the first bar, I didn't hear anything at all. <laughs> a little bit uh, disconcerting, you might say. But anyway, that was the um, Prelude um, on Prelude in G, uh, BWV541. And it is only the second time I think I've uh, played the uh, that piece on the channel. I think I played it... Is it the second time? Um, I think second or I think it's second time. I played it in the uh, organ recital um, uh, from where was it? The, um, in Harlem, in St. Bovo Kirk. Wonderful organ that is. Right, our first piece of waffle. If there's a baby over there, can we shut that door, please? It's quite noisy. It's just to let you know the, the results of the Mendelssohn. There okay. Was, there were two votes in the chat. Only two votes. Jerry, Jerry H would like the Well, Mendelssohn's later, much later in the in the thing, so they've got they've got about half an hour to vote yet. Oh, okay. Do you want them to move a bit longer? Uh, yes, please. Okay then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we had a, an eager vote for the Mendelssohn. Keep voting for the Mendelssohn. If you missed the vote uh, question earlier on, it was any. Any, any of the slow movements from any of the um, Mendelssohn organ sonatas. I'll play that later on. So, uh, I don't know whether people outside of the UK can receive BBC proms. Um, there is a, they have a pretty good app now called BBC Sounds. Um, it basically, it's replacing uh, the iPlayer. And you, I think you can, might be able to get them, uh, BBC Sounds, from abroad. And I've actually just, the BBC uh, proms started last night and I thought it would be quite useful actually just to highlight the, um, the organ proms, ones I think you ought to look out for, because the organ is featured quite a lot this year. It's the 150th uh, anniversary of the, um, the Great Hall, the Royal Albert Hall, uh, being built. I think that's right. And um, they're celebrating this year, the organ went in at the same time. It's been um, adapted and changed over the years uh, and enlarged. Um, but they're actually really making a, a thing of the organ this, for this season. Amazingly, it has 9,999 pipes. I wonder whether that was intentional. Just one more pipe, um, even if it just doesn't do anything. Would have made it 10,000 on the dots, but no, it's 9,999 which I think is rather wonderful. So like I say, they, the proms started last night. So if you, if you get access to BBC Sounds um, or, or any other way of um, catching up with the proms, last night's first night of the proms featured uh, the wonderful uh, organ concerto by uh, Francis Poulenc, um, the organ concerto in G minor for strings, organ and uh, timpani. Terrific piece, one of my favorite uh, pieces by Poulenc and it, just wonderful, very, very um, cheesy, very camp, very um, off the wall, basically. It's, it's, it's really wonderful music. Um, and I'm, I'm a really, it's really happy music. You know, uh, Poulenc was very good at writing happy music. He's also very good at writing very serious music. Um, and very poignant, powerful stuff. But Poulenc's organ concerto is, 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 is more sort of, um, it's more on the happy end. And it has some very wonderfully serious moments as well. Uh, Daniel Hyde, the director of music at King's College Cambridge, played the organ and it was really good. Really, really, we listened to it earlier on and it was uh, terrific. So that's one to listen back to if you, if you can. Um, tomorrow morning, um, believe it or not, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning at 11.45, uh, Martin Baker is uh, giving an, an organ only prom. Uh, well, I think it was meant to be uh, Olivier Latry. Uh, but I, I can't see what happened there. It was, it was originally Latry uh, with improvisations and Bach, but now it's Martin Baker with improvisations and Bach. I don't know whether he's been tested positive for COVID or something, I don't know. Um, but what's Martin going to play tomorrow morning? Well, Martin at 10.45 live is going to play the wonderful St. Anne, 
Uh, you've heard me play that many times, that one in E flat, five, five, two. Followed by an improvisation on that piece. Um, what, what he's going to do with that, so that's really, be really interesting. Um, followed by the Fantasia in G major, uh, 572 PS Dog. Um, followed by an improvisation on PS Dog. Again, how he will do that, because there isn't really a tune as such in that. Is, is there? Diddle -diddle 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 that one. It's not really a tune, it's just a lot of arpeggio. So, what he's going to improvise on, I'd be very interested to see that. Uh, followed by the Passacaglia and Fugue in C minor 582. Wonderful, wonderful piece, of course. I wonder whether he'll do a little uh, cadenza at the end. And then he's going to improvise on in English melodies at the end of the um, concert. So definitely, definitely one worth to look out for. Um, then the next organ concert that I can see is on Saturday the 4th of September, same time, 11.45. It's another, so it's a Saturday, um, and it's by Thomas Trotter. Thomas Trotter is a, uh, a, a just like Martin Baker, a, a renowned organ recitalist. Um, Martin Baker was actually a director of music at Westminster Cathedral until recently and has now gone freelance. Thomas Trotter has been freelance for most of his organ career and his, well, organists don't really come much better really than uh, Thomas Trotter. He's going to play um, Bach, it's an open with Bach, uh, Fantasia and Fugue in G minor, 542, a bit of Vidor from his Symphony Number no. 5, the first movement, the Allegro Vivace, I think arguably, uh, in, well in my opinion, the best movement from the whole symphony. Uh, Sassons, uh, Riviere du Soir, I don't know that, uh, arranged by uh, Gilmour, uh, followed by uh, Sassons Fantasy Number no. 1 in E flat major, which you might hear later if you're lucky. <laughs> and then ending the concerts with the epic um, Liszt, French Liszt, uh, Fantasia and Fugue on the Ad Nost uh, Ad Salutarum Undum. It's a wonderful piece which lasts for about, depending on how fast you play it, about half an hour. It's, to, it, it's I think it's um, how do we describe it, guys? Um, you know, it's probably the ultimate organ piece. Um, it's got everything, absolutely everything. Full organ, maybe quietest organ, diminished chords, left, right, and center. Huge, huge excitement. If you don't know it, it's very, very well worth listening out for. So that's Saturday the 4th of September. Um, then there's the next one um, is Tuesday the 7th of September, 7 p.m. Um, a, a concert with orchestra and organ, but one of the pieces is the Sasson's uh, third sym symphony in C minor, which has now become known as the Organ Symphony. Um, it wasn't ever written as an organ symphony, uh, but the organ has a really wonderful, prominent part in it, um, and it's a really wonderful piece. And I know I've heard it live in the Albert Hall during a prom, um, and it always gets a rapturous response, the, you know, the, the applause. Uh, for that particular piece is always amazing. If you've seen the film, there's an English film, you Americans might not have seen it, but there's an English film called Babe, just B-A-B-E, and it's about a pig. Uh, it's a, basically a children's film, um, but it's wonderful. And this pig can be trained <laughs> to be a sheep pig, not a sheep dog, a sheep pig. And this pig can round up sheep, uh, much to the dismay of the fellow sheep dogs, um, but the, and this pig works out a way how to talk and communicate to the sheep. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because the the main tune from the final movement of the Assassin uh, has become, uh, became the theme tune, the, that's the credit tune, uh, to Babe, uh, with, with words, which I think is rather wonderful. So that's the, um, I think we should move on from that. How was that for waffle? That was quite a bit of waffle, wasn't it? Now, I'm not, I haven't really been able to see the chat, your chat here. Um, I'm going to have to have a, a bit of a um, catch up with Caroline, I think. I was too busy waffling. Now, those people who read The Times, might be, there might be some of you. And the Times is a, um, it's a newspaper here in the UK, quite a popular newspaper here in the UK. And this morning, um, well, today's article, today's edition, um, featured an article by Hugh Edwards. Hugh Edwards is a, a British journalist, he's a news anchor, so he reads the news, um, and he's, he's very good at doing that. He's Welsh, he has a, look, a wonderful soft Welsh accent, and he's an organist as well, he's an amateur organist, and a great supporter of organ music. 
and he wrote an article this morning in the Times, and it was really, really wonderful actually because um, it was quite near the beginning. You know, newspapers often push the less significant, less important articles towards the back, don't they? Or if you're reading it on on your phone, you have to keep scrolling to the bottom. <laughs> but no, this one's actually quite near the top, um, and it's about redundant organs. And um, Hugh Edwards is, I think, rightly concerned about um, our, he, call, he calls them cultural glories of Britain's church organs. Um, so I'll, I'll quote him here. Um, so Q Edwards is leading, is leading calls for the cultural glories of Britain's church organs to be protected against vandalism, neglect and destruction. Wow, that's quite, quite powerful stuff, isn't it? Um, he has issued a stark warning that countless pipe organs around the UK have been lost as churches are closed or demolished, in some cases being bulldozed with little thought given to the treasures within. Well, that's, that, so you, I think we all know of organs um, which are redundant, um, and you've probably all seen organs in churches and chapels which have just been left and neglected. And it's a very sad sight. You know, organs in churches and organs in cathedrals um, are not cheap and they have to go through, a, wherever is buying an organ has to go through this whole process of uh, raising funds for an organ. An organ can cost like a million pound or a million dollars, whatever, um, which is not an insignificant amount of money, right? For a church in a, in a village or a small town, finding a million either it's pounds, euros or, or, or dollars it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of dedication. And to see um, the, an, an organ just being neglected and falling apart and vandalised in some cases, uh, after having been through many years ago that process of raising money and all the excitement about getting the new organ, it's really, really sad. And I, th th this article does a really good, um, uh, it, it really sells a story. I'll just show you a quick picture of Hugh. Uh, that's Hugh um, Edwards on an organ which you will become uh, familiar with. Do you know which organ that is, guys? It's an organ in the north of England. And you might say, um, I know that organ particularly well because I used to work there. Any, anyone got that yet? Well, it's the organ of York Minster. That's the actually the old console on the up on the screen. Um, that console has been refurbished and it's getting new. It's got new stops, new keyboards, and it just looks wonderful. That's the organ that I I knew when I was organ scholar there, um, and that's the one we haven't replicated. But anyway, more about the the new organ later on. Um, Hugh actually draws attention to um, a chap called Martin Renshaw. I'm, I'm not aware of Martin Renshaw, um, and this is really this is really quite heartening. Martin is uh, striving to save these instruments, um, and is is um, setting up a sort of a campaign and and helping to transfer them to churches in the EU, um, um, where the I think particularly actually over in the east of Europe. Um, where the demand for good pipe organs is actually on the rise. So that's a really wonderful thing. Um, and I, the reason I'm um, raising it today is, you know, what can we, how can we help? Uh, what can we do to uh, raise awareness? Not only just in England, but I'm sure in America as well and around the world, there are organs which just need a new home. There is a, a Facebook group, um, Redundant Organs, something, 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 um, but I think we, we can do something more to help. So I, I think I will uh, think, be thinking about that, how we, how we can help. Okay, so now I'm going to play you another piece of music. Um, and I'm actually going to just play a, an arrangement of a piece by Handel. And it's March. It's his March from Scipio. It's very short. Um, you might recognise it as the, I think it's the, um, the Grenadiers March theme. So this is the Handel March from Scipio. I think, Eddie, uh, you might quite like this one.
Well, how are we getting on with the chat? Should we have a quick look to see what you guys are all chatting about? Who have we got in then? Well, there's been quite a lot of chat, so it's very good to have you with us, uh, guys. Um, I see, I can see just looking at the bottom now, we've got Stone there. So thank you very much, Stone, for your contribution towards the Joint Junior Organ Recital. We've got John Hosking there. John gave a very exciting and wonderful recital just the other night on his own uh, YouTube channel where he played the complete um, a symphony by Vierre number no. two. It's wonderful. If you don't know it, it's not a, um, it's not a, uh, what a, the word I'm trying to find is not a regularly played piece. Um, compared to number one and possibly number three. I think you've heard me play on here uh, the first movement of that. Who else have we got in here? PJ, hello. Um, can you tell me about the history of your current organ and where and when the new organ will be in your new home? Yes, yeah, so, well, I'll try to remember about that later on. Uh, Chris Luckinbill, hello, good to have you with us. Maurice, Keith, um, Daniel Makepeace, Eddie. I'm, I'm, I thought you might uh, quite like the handle. We've, we've even got Maurice Drouflet in with us, although he's just gone. That's a shame. I would like to have had a chat with Maurice de Rouvelet, um, and asked him why on earth he threw most of his music on the fire, which is true. Okay, let's just now go on. So if you have questions, burning questions that you want to ask, please do put them in the chat and hopefully Caroline will be able to let me know what they are later on. So, okay, so we're actually going to now go on to the uh, new organ. Uh, so, PJ, I can, I can now answer your question. Um, about particularly when the new organ is going to arrive. It is going to arrive, fingers crossed, in November, in time for, obviously, the Christmas season. Uh, Advent Sunday is in towards the end of November. I really want to have it in Advent Sunday. Advent Sunday is a really wonderful occasion, and I really want to make the most of Advent Sunday here. Um, and we're also are going to have the um, Winter Organ Festival, um, and that will depend on the arrival of the new organ, so that will be November or December time. So we'll, we will inaugurate the, the new organ uh, in the Winter Festival, so November, December. The, the big uh, sort of dependency with the new organ is um, are the keyboards. The keyboards are coming over from Germany. They are UHT keyboards. I can't remember what that now stands for, but it's the, I think it's the initials of the guy who started the company. He's world renowned. Um, he had he has a very unique way of making these keyboards. If you want to go and see how he makes the keyboards or what, uh, what makes them unique, go and have a look at my video on the channel uh, called uh, "I Visit My Organ Builders Workshop." And actually, there was a demonstration of these UHT keyboards on there and why they are so wonderful. There's a bit of a, uh, a long lead time on the keyboards, so we are. Um, dependent on the UHT supplying us um, with those keyboards. So there are four keyboards, it's a four manual organ, um, and hopefully they were the order was placed for them in March. We're now in August, really, tomorrow, aren't we? But they, so they could be arriving any time. Apparently they just, they just turn up. They, um, the artists don't necessarily know when they're going to arrive. They will just turn up on the doorstep in a big batch. Uh, so fingers crossed they arrive soon. <laughs> so we've got a new let me show you a new picture of the organ. Um, on the screen now, um, you would have seen a picture of this, the one on the left at least, um, in the organ festival brochure. You can see there, basically that, that is what the organ's going to look like from the front. Um, the picture on the left doesn't have any stops on it, but uh, believe me, they will, there will be stops there. You can actually just see the stops on the right hand side. That's looking um, bird's eye view uh, down. This is a replica of the organ of York Minster. If I just zoom back to this picture here, um, it's actually a replica of that console there. So um, perhaps we'll get Hugh Edwards around here to look at this um, new organ and perhaps talk about his, um, you know, his concern about redundant organs. Um, so that is. It's not quite finished yet. Some of the pistons um, possibly are not going to stay exactly where they are there. Um, but the, the toe pistons, I think, are finalised and um, the design of the music desk might just change a little bit as well. Uh, Colin sent me, Colin is the owner of Renatus and he sent me just a, a message. We've got a, a WhatsApp group going on. We, we, we regularly exchange banter and uh, updates. 
and he sent me a message um, saying just the other day saying that he's working on the, the side panels of the organ um, and we're actually going to have a cupboard on each side. Uh, so on one side, I think on the left hand side, as you're playing, um, will be the, or, uh, the computer. So the computer will be actually inside the organ console itself, tucked away um, with a door. So once it's turned on, close that door. We'll make sure obviously that there's enough ventilation in there. And there'll also be a touch screen somewhere which will come up and we'll be able to see, you know, I, the last thing I want to be doing is just getting up over time and going around to the cupboard door and having a look on the screen. So there will be a, uh, a sort of a touch screen which will rise up and then when I don't want to see the screen I'll it'll pop back down. That's on one side and then on the other side um, is it, going to be a sort of a music storage space where we can just put all of the, uh, the music that I'm currently working on so it's not scattered around the music room. So really really exciting about um, that. It's really going to transform the channel and I, I really really hope that it's, it will genuinely transform um, helps work organs generally. Um, I've given Renatus and Romsey Organ uh, Works the space to be creative um, and the space to take take uh, innovation forwards. And so they're they, they're working on um, how they can change the stop heads, make the, all the stop heads interchangeable. It's one of the great um, sort of mysteries of Hauptwerk. How do you go from Rotterdam to Caen to Harlem? to St. Mary Le Beau, to you know, all these other wonderful organs. You can load them up within minutes, but yet the, the physical organ doesn't change. The stops don't change, on mine at least. So uh, changeable stop heads is the way forward for us, we think. So they're working on that. It's really, really exciting. Okay, and then finally in this sort of waffly section, um, we're gonna just talk about a new feature that's going to appear on the channel. Uh, from next Friday. Um, this new video series does not yet have a name and my patrons are currently um, sort of brainstorming and um, thinking about names uh, for this new series. I put a post on the other day um, announcing it and it's basically a, a way of um, engaging with you guys. Last, throughout the course of last year when I was doing my weekly organ recitals. It makes me even tired just thinking about doing a weekly organ recital now. Um, we went through a phase of the recitals being 100% requested by by you. So all of the music that um, I played in the recitals was all requested and it was really wonderful. Not only because it was just a way of um, you know handing over to you to take control, but it was also a wonderful way to learn new music, for me to learn new music, new repertoire, and also for you guys to broaden your horizons, your musical horizons. I played music that I'd never even heard of before, um, but it was all really, really wonderful. Um, one That particular piece which springs to mind is uh, Moonlight and Roses by La Mer, uh, Andantino in D flat is its proper name. Never heard of it before. Um, and it was a, it was requested by a number of people. And it's, it, I love it now, I, I love playing that. In fact, I really should play it again soon. So what we're going to do from Friday, this coming Friday, next week, uh, is go back to that and um, have a, an, an organ piece a week, a pre-recorded organ piece. Perhaps I might do them live at some point, um, but it, it generally be pre-recorded and it will be a, an organ piece requested by you. And you can basically do it by a relay, music relay. The video will go live on a Friday um, and on that video you will um, in the comment section you will uh, leave your request for the next week so if you want to hear you know a movement from one of the Vidor symphonies or um, a Bach chorale or something like that you write it in the in the comment section and you if you then see a piece of music that someone else has already requested that you think that's a really good idea I'd love to hear that click like on the comment okay so Basically, the the, um, the the comment, the request with the most likes wins. It's as simple as uh, as that. So you need to get uh, commenting on those videos and thinking about what you'd like me to play. So there is there is a post on the community tab, um, which has sort of started it off. It's kickstarted it, and there's already quite a number of organ pieces on there, and I think one's in the lead. 
Um, so it looks like I'll be recording that one, but we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll give it until possibly Wednesday or Thursday, um, and then we'll record it. So we'll look out for that next week. If you have any bright ideas about what this might be called, please let us know in the chat. And it might encourage the patrons just to come up with some, some more ideas. Right, well, um, we're going to actually now have this Mendelssohn, um, and then um, what, which Mendelssohn are we going to have? Yeah, uh, Maurice, well, let's just try it. Mm. It's lukewarm, I think it's room temperature. It's, it's just about drinkable, uh, but I think it's actually not too bad. Um, what else have we got? Cheryl, good to have you in. Um, hi, Cheryl. Um, who else here? Um, Andantino, good to have you with us. David, David Beckman, uh, Changeable's top heads. Well, it, I think it's just the way for, it, it has to be the way forwards. Um, Lud 3v1co, that sounds like a Star Wars character, doesn't it? Um, a little screens in the stop heads that display the stops corresponding to the organ would be awesome. I completely agree, it would be completely awesome. I, I'm a completely, um, I'm a geek, I love technology, I love uh, iPhones and iPads and, you know, an LCD screen uh, would be really exciting. However, uh, let, me, let me just read your screen name once more, because I can't remember all the characters. However, LUD3V1CO, um, or is that a zero? Um, this organ has to be completely traditional. Completely, completely traditional. Okay, that's my, that was my biggest um, requirement, my overarching requirement for this organ with Renatus. You, there's no hint of it being Hauptwerk or an electric or digital, whatever you want to call it. it. It has to be completely traditional, like the sort of organ that you will find in one of our English cathedrals, okay? Very sort of um, old, you know, um, and yeah, uh, no, no hint of LCDs, basically. I love the idea, yes, and if, if we could have a, a stop head where the, the, where the actual font was exactly the same, and the background was white, the same colour as the rest of the stop, um, and it completely blended in, and I might, I might consider it, but it wouldn't blend in, it'd, have a, it'd be square, it would be black, and it would, you'd, you'd have the writing on it. And, and for me, personally for me, it's, it's, it's not the option. Um, I think that is a, an excellent solution for someone else. However, for me, not so much. But guys, what am I gonna, which Mendelssohn, which Mendelssohn was in the lead? Which one is it? Peter Brand, I should add whiskey to my coffee. Well, I, I would, but I'm not the biggest whiskey drinker. That's a problem. I, I prefer port and sherry, um, wine. I do like wine, and I'm actually getting into a bit of gin. Um, I try not to drink it during the week. Um, I try to drink at the weekends, not during the week. So come on, um, uh, Jerry, um, Roger, yes. What, are you going to have a blower switch <laughs> and the sound to accompany it? Well, some organs, some hard work organs, um, most of them actually um, have the, the blower sound sampled. Uh, so the, I've actually turned the, the, I think I have, yeah, the blower right down on Rotterdam. Uh, but some organs, um, the organ blower is actually quite loud. Uh, but I think it just gets in the way a little bit. So I, I, I turn it down. But yes, indeed, when you turn the organ on and help work loads and the sample loads, for example, uh, I don't know how many of you watched my uh, Doodlang video the other day where I converted it into a, uh, from a stereo uh, sound into a, a more generous stereo. Um, there was some confusion in the chat actually in the comments about that. Um, Doodlang, but Roger has a very um, exciting um, blower sound. You know, you, turn, you load up the organ and you can really, really hear the bellows filling up. It's very, very exciting. So it, that, that could happen, actually. It depends on the organ itself. Um, Caroline, I need to know what the Mendelssohn I'm playing. Can you let me know, please. Can you write it in the chat or something? Um, there, so there we go. I've just had an email from Samuel Sleeth asking me a question. What is your opinion on the new detuning feature introduced into Hauptwerk? Uh, do you think a more realistic technique um, would be for samples to be loaded and naturally tuned as uh, when they were sampled? Well, look, um, this is actually, um, I will say, the, um, uh, the organ in Doodlang again. Um, there are two, op two, I think, currently two options. Um, on how to load it. 
you can load it, and I've only tried this one, this is what you heard in the Guillemont uh, Grand Coeur, uh, an untuned organ, an untuned sample, which I take to assume is um, how the organ was recorded on that day and wasn't there was no sort of um, post-production in terms of um, uh, naturalizing, I'm not sure what the, what the word is, uh, naturalizing, let's call it, say that, uh, the pitch to A, A equals 440. The doodlang one is as it was, out of the box, as it were. So I think, I, I would love to be able to hear uh, Lancet, Caen, and Rotterdam, um, and uh, untuned, definitely, definitely. I think it's really wonderful. The, you know, I've actually got um, the organ now in uh, Rotterdam, the detuning feature turned up to 120, Seven. I don't know why it's 127. I don't know why it's not zero to 100 percent. But it's, anyway, it's zero to 127 percent. It's on 127 percent. So I have no idea. I can't really hear much of a difference, actually, to be honest. Um, to be honest with you. So yeah, listen out uh, for the tuning on this organ. Some I, I but I, I would like to hear the organs um, as they were recorded without any post production. That would be amazing. Okay, so PJ voted number six, um, Jerry Hall voted number three, Jerry Martin voted for Anna Slomanchov number four. So that's not really clear, is it? That's just um, one, one of each. I can't have all three. I'm going to ask uh, any, any more. Does anybody want um, which, which slow movement from the Mendelssohn organ sonatas would you like to hear now? Um, and then I will, I will play it. As soon as I get another vote, um, I will play it. Gerda has asked for number four. Okay, well, it's going to be number four then. So it's going to be number four. Four is the Andante Religioso, or is it the, is it the Allegretto, the, um, the third movement? Needs a bit of clarification there. So either movement number two or number three of Sonata number four. Hope you guys are enjoying this waffle. Um, this is just like the first one. Um, it's quite a, a, a fun thing to do. It's something that I want to develop. It's not just going to be me waffling all the time. I want to have guests here. We have interviews. Um, we can look at the organ news. And see what's going on in the world and talk about hot, you know hot topics um, and then really sort of make it into a, a live podcast as it were so if your feedback what you want to hear me talk about would be really really good there we go so Mendelssohn sonata number four um, the third movement that's what, that is what I'm going to play now, Cheryl you probably asked for sonata number three it is beautiful but I'm going to take your number three as third movement of sonata number four. Otherwise, we'll be here all day waffling about Mendelssohn organ sonatas. So this is going to be the fourth, the third movement of sonata number four in B flat.
what I was actually showing you there. Um, the camera is um, wouldn't focus because it's fixed focus tonight, as Gerda will appreciate. Um, it actually says Philip Moore, uh, July 1977. I had my own copy of this um, and I lost it. Luckily, it was it's the same version, same edition. It's a very, a very naughty edition. It's one of these Novello Ivor, uh, Ivor Atkins ones, and it has editorials in it. And you never quite know what's Mendelssohn and what's, you know, Ivor, really. But anyway, um, Philip, when he retired from York in 2008, uh, when that was actually when I left York as organ scholar, he had a clear out of music and he... He invited me into his uh, into his house in Minster Court, and uh, offered me, um, you know, have a look at the music room. These are the organ pieces that I want to get rid of. Help yourself, basically. So this is one of the pieces that I, one of the books that I got. My my edition was um, much older than this, um, and it was falling to bits. I think I had inherited it from someone else. But I'd learned most of the organ sonatas from that book, and I'd lost it. Um, only just a couple of years ago, um, lost all my markings, my fingerings, and you know when you learn something um, from an edition, from a score, and you mark it up, it's sacred. It's really private and personal. And then when you um, come to play the same piece, which in theory you've learnt and you know, from a bare copy, from a new copy, it's almost like starting again. <laughs> You know what I mean, don't you? I'm, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only person who feels like that. So alas, this, even though it saved, it was a saving grace, um, it didn't have any of my markings in it. So I had to almost relearn them all, um, which actually was no bad thing. You know, the older and more experienced we get, you know, as we uh, quite young, learn sort of bad habits and learn things possibly too quickly or incorrect um, uh, articulation. So relearning them, remarking this, this, this score up latterly actually was probably quite a good thing. So I want to really quickly just um, talk retrospectively about the recent organ festival and then about the next organ festival. So I will send out an email if you're watching and you are involved, if you are a composer or if you are a performer. Um, I will send you an email very soon just to say how grateful I am. Others have not had a chance really this week at all. I purposely have had a bit of a, we both had a quiet week. Last week was a very full on. Um, and we've had a bit, little bit of downtime this week. Uh, so I will get in touch. And also guys over on Patreon, I will also send you a message just to um, a, 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 um, a post just to ask for your feedback. And I'd, I'd love to get your feedback and just what we can do better for next time, really. But I think I just wanted to very briefly talk about it. Um, I mean, I had a great time. I just had a really, really wonderful time. It's such a, such a rewarding thing to do. Uh, play here and arrange for these young organists to come together um, to play for you guys. I think it's a really wonderful experience. And... I can see a future in online organ festivals. You know, there are organ festivals which have been going for a long time. For example, a very renowned one here in the UK and abroad is the St Albans Organ Festival. Um, it has competitions and all sorts of stuff. It's now grown way beyond an organ festival. It's um, a music festival. It has choirs, orchestras, and every, every, everyone getting involved. I don't think we'll ever get to that sort of stage. Uh, but an online festival uh, focused around the organ where you have live chat and you can talk to your, um, the, your fellow BIS community members um, from the comfort of your own home whilst drinking uh, lukewarm coffee um, or, you know, whiskey, whatever. It's a really wonderful thing to do, isn't it? It's really relaxing and you can just be your, you can be yourself. You can tune in, tune out, click pause, rewind, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and you can choose what you want to watch. So I think it's a really wonderful way of experiencing music. I wonder whether this will um, sort of change the organ scene. I really hope so. I really hope, I think the organ scene needs to be rejuvenated a little bit. Um, it needs to be modernized somewhat. I think Hauptwerk actually has done um, Jerry Martin, you're, you're watching, and you sent me a message 
uh, about how it works. Standing on the shoulders of giants of Alan, uh, Viscount, Phoenix organs, you know, um, Copeman Hart organs. Um, you know, they were doing it years and years and years ago. Rogers organs, 70s, 80s, 90s. This is a 90s organ. Um, so actually, in terms of digital organs, this is actually quite a late model. They were, they, were, they were around for decades before this, but Halberg wouldn't be here without these. Um, and I do think um, that now with Halberg, the organ is now getting into more people's houses, uh, more people have access to organs that they wouldn't otherwise have had. Me, for example, I wouldn't have had access to this. Um, I would just have a piano in the other room. I'm an organist and until I had this, I didn't have an organ on which to practice unless I went to local church. Um, so having this at home, having the organ over the internet, on YouTube, in high quality, I think is really quite special uh, and very modern. It's very modern, isn't it? Having access to all these wonderful YouTube um, recordings. There are organ recordings on YouTube which go back years and years, like 13, 14 years old, because YouTube's getting on a bit now. Um, but the quality is a little bit dubious. But now with Halberg, you can really get high quality, higher quality than some CD recordings, higher quality than you might experience if you actually go to an organ festival. Perhaps you, you're late, the car broke down, it was busy, you couldn't find the space in the car park, and you're rushed towards the back of the church or the cathedral and you can't hear a damn thing. And someone's sat up front of you with a big hat or someone's got a cough next to you. It's cold, or you're on a hard pew, and it's not ideal. But yet with these, like with the organ festival that we did, headphones on, you know, Keith Nightingale, you've got some really wonderful headphones and you're right in there. You're, you're, you're in the action. You've got these uh, high quality video cameras. There's nothing else like it. I don't think there's any other um, instrument that is offering this. Is there? I don't know. Is, is there a piano community doing similar things? Not that I, I don't go searching for it, but perhaps there is, but I've not seen it. I think this is a very, very exciting time um, to be an organist, actually, whether you're young, middle-aged, old, beginner, advanced, or just a sort of a part-time amateur. I think it's a really exciting time to be inspired. That's one of our motto lines, isn't it? You know, be inspired. Um, and I think it work does inspire. And that's the whole point of the, of the organ festival. Uh, I really wanted it to inspire. I really wanted it to be diverse. Uh, so we had the call for composers on the first night, which uh, was terrific for me, just really heartening for me that people would uh, trust in me to play their music. That was amazing. I can't believe that. And the quality of music that we received um, was just um, overwhelmingly good, to be honest. Fantastic. Really, really fantastic. I mean, I've looked through various organ albums you know, published by OUP, uh, by Peters, you know, whoever um, of modern music, you know, you look, sift through them and think you're going to find a new gem, the, the, the new best organ piece, you know, to match Bach. But you never, you never do, you never find something. And um, they're quite rare. But I, f I feel like those pieces that we experienced in uh, Call of Composers 2 were really top draw. You know, they were, they were sort of the, the pieces that you would find in a modern organ album and think, that's really good, I'll play that, I'll have it in my repertoire. So I'm very grateful um, to those people who submitted pieces. Uh, then I'm going to go on to Organ Complin, which is becoming more established, uh, which is a really wonderful um, late night, uh, very low key, slimmed down version of Virtual Church, really, um, with atmosphere, uh, no waffle at all. It's all music and um, readings and psalms. Did you notice, by the way, in Organ Complin, the organ did break. I was accompanying um, Caroline singing her psalm, one of her psalms, uh, and no it wasn't, it was the um, before the ending of the day. She was singing that on a pre-record and I was accompanying it and the organ ciphered. Um, luckily it ciphered very quietly but I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't, my divisionals stopped working and it, we were live, you know, I couldn't, I was playing and my cipher was being streamed over the internet and I was very, very aware of that. The following piece from the Terluches and Terminum, the hymn, 
was the Saab, which was then, I was meant to accompany live, um, but it was still broken. So Caroline, on the pre-record, started the Saab, and I sort of came in very quietly halfway through. It was a little bit disconcerting, and that's one of the reasons why we need to resolve this. I'm, and I'm a little bit nervous about being live um, uh, playing this. It did cipher earlier once today when I was testing, uh, but it hasn't done tonight. Fingers crossed it won't do it in the final piece. Um, joint junior organ title was just wonderful, wasn't it? To see young people play from around the world. Um, really inspiring for me, actually, to see these young people uh, play. Um, this gave me some really wonderful ideas and really made me want to work harder myself and practice. It just reminded me of when I was that age, um, going through all of those exciting new experiences. Um, and it, just, it, really, it really is inspiring watching young people play. It's just the best thing in the world. You can expect a lot more of that in the future. And then my festival organ recital. I, I won't do the festival organ recital necessarily next time. It'll be a guest organist um, to watch this space. That's one of the reasons why I want to get the new organ uh, is to uh, invite people um, like Thomas Trotter, for example, and Martin Baker, who are doing the proms, to come and play the organ here, give a concert here. Maybe they, maybe Thomas Trotter could give the um, festival organ recital next time. Let's let's see. Someone of that caliber certainly. Um, and then virtual church from St. George's Church in Chichester on Sunday. So a lot of stuff to get through, a lot of um, music, 41 pieces I think it was, wasn't it? Um, a lot of um, 20, I think it was, I advertised 27 artists, but actually there were 28 artists in total. Uh, but the future um, organ festivals, we want to keep evolving, taking them to the next step. Um, we can't or we can't just sit still, we always have to evolve. This is why I'm always asking for feedback and always um, watching the comments, which is why, guys, I keep saying, please leave comments in the video. I need to know what you're thinking. I need to know whether you like the video, you would like the content, or something doesn't work for you. I really respond to that, and it really helps, um, it really helps mold the channel. So please, please, guys, keep leaving comments on all of my videos. The comments are different to live chat. Please remember that. Um, it really, really helps. So we, let's. Uh, so the, I mentioned about younger people playing the organ. I want to involve younger people, get them around here playing this organ live, for you, um, would be a wonderful thing. Have an organ competition, um, you know, a low key organ competition. Uh, invite people to uh, participate, and then we'll uh, somehow come up with a winner, um, a, a jury, um, and then a, a, comp a composition competition as well. So rather than just asking people to submit pieces, which um, Call of Composers 3, of course, will do that. But then we'll also have a composition competition where we can uh, offer people a prize uh, for the best, um, most inspired composition to really encourage new organ music to be, to be uh, written. So all of that sort of stuff to uh, look out for in the upcoming um, organ festival in the winter. So the winter here is November, December time. So look out for that. Just before I play the final piece, which is going to be a piece by uh, Sasson, I'm just going to... Um, um, I completely forgot what I was going to, what, what I was going to talk about. Uh, it's, it, I, was, I was going to go off piste and talk to you, mention something, um, but I can't remember what it was now. So I might just go and play the Sasson and then it'll probably come to me halfway through. I won't stop, I'll keep going, and I'll try to remember uh, to mention it at the end. So this is the fantasy or fantasy in, 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 um, in E flat. There is a recording of me playing this um, on the uh, Faircal organ in C Cathedral in France. Three manual, you might want to compare the two. This is a um, performance on Rotterdam. Hope you enjoy it.
Right, well that was the sass on and unfortunately I couldn't remember what I was going to talk about. I was thinking of, well, through the piece. What on earth was it? Something came to my head and it's just, it's just gone. Anyway, so Caroline's just um, shouted out two questions to me um, and also Hugo was shouting. I think Hugo was shouting more questions to me than Caroline actually just then. Um, so the question was, I think um, there were two questions which came in. I think it might have been from Katrina. What do I enjoy doing the most? Um, th th engaging, it's as simple as that. I, I, sitting here playing the organ is only um, part of the fun. It's the engagement I get from you guys. It's, it's, the, it's this, it's the being able to see uh, live chats. Thank you very much, Jerry Martin, for your donation and Ian Garden for your donation just now. That's really, really wonderful. It's being able to respond to what's going on. That's, it's, it's a new thing, isn't it? Um, so that is my favorite thing, I think, um, performing for you and making this one, I think the one, what, the, what makes us unique and what I'm trying to build um, and possibly different, because I, li I like to do things differently to everyone else. I don't like to follow um, status quo uh, or just follow the norm. I like to do things differently. If someone's doing something else, I won't do it. I will go off on a different uh, idea. But one thing I'm very proud of, and I think one thing we do differently to everyone, every other organ channel, is um, I'm trying to build or and focus on the community aspect of it. It's not just me performing to you. You, you know, you watching some guy on the telly uh, performing uh, like some TV star. Because I'm not at all. I'm just merely part of the community. I'm possibly just pulling the strings, bringing it together. But we wouldn't be here without you, without people chatting away in the live chat, um, sending me wonderful emails, uh, sending me suggestions um, over on Patreon, having some uh, friendly banter on there, over on Facebook, sharing links to various things. The whole thing is, the, the, the community is just so special, so special. And I spend a lot of time thinking about how we can um, build the community. A uh, second question that was shouted to me, I apologise, I'm not sure who it was from, um, was how do I switch between the organs so quickly? Um, well, it's, that's quite, it's not easy, um, but it can be made easier by the fact that currently on this organ, um, and, and I might shoot myself in the foot with the new organ, uh, but on this organ the stop heads don't change, they're all the same, which has its... Um, positives and its negatives. Uh, so my general go-to organ is Rotterdam. I've used it a lot on the channel. It's featured more than any other organ uh, for virtual church. It can do basically everything. It can play hymns really well. It can play those pieces really well. Um, and the stops here on the organ, physical stops, are basically laid out for Rotterdam. And when I load Caen, uh, when I load any, any other organ, I um, program the stops as they are here um, for calm as well. For example, the swell strings are always the same place. So those people who watched the video yesterday, the, the, the original Viscount sounds, even the Viscount sounds, the Viscount stops, the internal sounds of that organ, the swell strings are actually, the swell strings there, what they say. So pull out those two stops there, the viol de gamba and the voix celeste. Uh, at Rotterdam, they're the strings, Korn, they're the strings, Nonce, they're the strings. So I program basically the organ, the stop heads, uh, to be closely match all the organs as possible. So the open diapason on the great, or the principal, or whatever you want to call it, wherever you are in the world, pray stand, it's always that open diapason, it's, that, it's always that mont, you know, it's, it's always the same sort of thing. So that's how I can go between them. Uh, with the new organ, I'm going to be able to, as you know, um, swap the stop heads around. Hopefully it will be a five minute job going from uh, Gurlitz. I've not used Gurlitz for ages because Gurlitz just doesn't fit on this organ. It's far, <laughs> far too big. Too many stops. So I, ha I have to use um, launch pads, which said before, I don't like to use launch pads. They get, they're distracting and they take me out of any immersion and I play, I play wrong notes because of it. So I'd like to use Gurlitz more. So going from Gurlitz, which is quite a big organ, 85 stops, I think, Gurlitz, is that right? Or maybe more than that. Um, going from Gurlitz uh, over to Nonce, which is another large organ, I'll be able to, able to switch the stops around. Um, five minute job, 
and then sit at the organ and all the stops do exactly what they say they do. Can't wait. Um, well, I think I'm going to call it a day there, guys. Um, uh, let me, please let me know um, what you think about this. Um, I need to work out a way um, to keep an eye on the chat and also um, waffle as well. Um, let's just have, quick, have a quick flick through. This is not very interesting for those people who are watching back later. Although, I know people like to watch the live stream. So what's going on in the chat then? Uh, butterflies on the socks, not quite um, smooth silk. They are cats in glasses today. Um, is Nala named after the Star Wars character Nala, uh, Nala Say? Actually, Chris Luck and Bill, she's not. Nala is named after Nala from Lion King. I think, um, oh, Caroline's already answered that. Um, Ian, I'll, uh, yes, I'll, I think you're talking about the sass on there. Ian, um, would you be able to, um, could we get in touch offline about the possibility of coming up to Blackburn, please? And doing a recording uh, virtual church uh, from there. A recording Blackburn would be terrific. Uh, what happens with the old organ console when the new one is finished, uh, Haynes Hobbies? Well, the organ here will go to, a, hopefully, go, go to a very good home. It will be sold. Uh, if you know anyone who wants a three-manual Viscount, which um, it works really well, apart from this mysterious cipher, but that might just be the computer. It might be my audio interface. If you know of anyone who wants a three-manual organ, which works extremely well for hat work, you have to let me know, because it will be for sale very soon, which will then make way for the new organ. Um, Matt Rose, what's Matt Rose said? Um, oh, well, there you go, Matt. So that's that's what you've just said. Okay, oh, so Matt, so I don't know whether you're still in, but actually I think it was Caroline's re re read your question. Uh, playing the organ for our choirs as visiting choirs this year in Chichester and Salisbury. Precious time on the organs are limited. Yes, they are. Any tips to get used to organs most quickly. Well, as I often say in virtual church, um, the best way I find to get to know an organ quickly um, is just uh, by playing it, right? Improvising on it. Uh, if you're not comfortable with improvising as such, get the um, hymn book, open it on a random hymn, the hymn that you know, uh, play through the hymn and just find sounds on it. Um, that's, that's what I do. When I get a new organ um, on, on you know, a new, a new Hauptwerk sample, I'll just play something, I'll improvise, not nothing flash. I'll pull out the stops individually. I won't use the divisionals. Pull out the stops, what, what do they sound like? Um, do it systematically, so start with the quiet ones, so go, with, go, with, go in with the strings, go up to the flutes, go into the um, diapasons, and then the, the bright stuff like the, um, the two foots, the mixtures, the mutations, the reeds, how big are the great reeds? Do you need to use great reeds or not? The big question, Matt, as you'll probably appreciate with um, Chichester and Salisbury, is they are much louder in the building than they are at the console it, uh, itself. So uh, you, my advice to you with those particular organs is um, err on the side of caution, I think. Um, Chichester, uh, you could probably use the great flute, um, it stops diapason on the great, um, with the swell coupled box shut um, choir is probably off limits because it's a rook positive salisbury the organ there is very loud um, but I th um, so yeah it might be worth asking someone to do do sound tests for you as well H having a wander down into the building to have a listen to sound balances so yeah improvise play him find those um, stops that you want jerry hall that's very very kind thank you very much indeed jerry very generous indeed. Um, okay, well, let's call it a day there. I've really enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed waffling. Um, we've only had a few topics. Let's just recap on what we've spoken about today. Um, organ prom, the BBC proms, the organ, when does it feature? Uh, redundant organs. Uh, so Hugh Edwards, um, BBC news journalist. Our new organ, uh, the new video series where the patrons are coming up with um, a new name for uh, over on Patreon. Uh, our organ festivals and also the um, ba basically questions and answers in the live chat. Um, what uh, what downtime are you anticipating once the new organ is ready? Downtime? I'm not sure we're going to get any downtime when the new organ's here, Roger. You know that, don't you? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Matt, the vergers at Chester are really friendly. Mention my name um, to the vergers at um, Chester, particularly the head verger, um, re a real character. Um, I know him pretty well, so say hello. Um, um, tell him that I send my love. So feedback on this one, please. So leave me a comment on the video um, after this has finished going live. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think and we will take it forwards. We'll come up with a name, music, coffee, and waffle, or something, I don't know. You come up, perhaps, if you come up with a, a catchy name, it will stick. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. Um, hope you've enjoyed your Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, and I've really enjoyed spending my evening with you. So thank you very much for having me. So until tomorrow, Virtual Church will be live tomorrow. Um, get your requests in. We still have a lot of requests actually to play, um, which we didn't manage to get through at St. George's and in the past couple of weeks. So we've ha we already have some backlog of requests, but um, please do send us an email with your hymn requests for tomorrow's Virtual Church, 6 p.m. UK time. Uh, until then, I will say a very fond uh, cheerio. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Goodbye.